I Troy Deeney? I couldn't bring sources this week because they're all packed. That's a true story. What do you mean your sources? By the way, this is part of the episode now. What do you mean your sources are packed? On, on the... To move house? On, yeah. Kieran, that's a sign from God telling you to ditch the sources. No, you need them. You don't need sources in a new house. You need sources. You don't. You need a Yankee candle on a throw. <laughs> you don't need sources. You, you're the only guy viewing a house. So the guys like any questions. You're like, yes. Uh, is there where, where would where would there be uh, space for my sources? I have two bookcases of sources. You need them. Uh, I imagine one of them is like a fake trapdoor that just leads you to like a big fondue room. <laughs> Guys, welcome to another episode of Myth Stories, the podcast that mixes stories and myths. We'll try and separate things that happen from the things that didn't happen. We don't let the truth get in the way of the good story. That's the main thing. Correct. So today I am presenting you, Kieran, with a story, potentially one of the most famous stories of all time. Some people see it as one of the best history stories of all time. I think it's a good story. I think it's a wee bit like Donnie Darko. Right. I think it's good. I don't think it's the best. You don't, you don't, want, you don't want to go nuts, but you don't want to make it your life. No. Also, you said you're going to wear knitwear for all this these episodes. Knitwear. I know, but I feel like you're running out of knitwear. Did I already do this one? I think so. Did I? I'd like to see like jazzy or knitwear from you. What do you see next one? Okay. Next one's fresh from the Iron Islands. Oh, mate. What okay. do you see? Nice. Fucking. I mean, William Thompson definitely isn't sitting there wearing it right now. So. We could, we should do an episode about the Iron Islands. All about the history I don't know if there's any history on it. Yeah, I just got carried away. Um, I'm wearing a vest. So, is, is there anybody on the back of that? Levine, Adam Levine. No, I don't know. You never know unless it's like Kobe or Michael Jordan yeah. or anyone. People are on the boat, fucking Willis on the back. Graph. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Palmer. You're like, and then you'll run into some guy who like is from here and in the NBA. He's like, oh, I see you're a big fucking Corey Rumichuk fan. You're like, I'm not made. I just. I got this in JD. It came I, enjoy, on the back. I enjoy when you meet an NBA or NHL fan from here and they just have fucking bags under their eyes. What do you mean? Because they've been fucking... <laughs> My Super Sunday's actually on a Monday morning at 4am. You know what I mean? If you're from here, being a fan of American sports will wipe eight years off your life expectancy. <laughs> Is it really worth it to see the fucking... the Cubs try and hit a home run and... Win the, Ottawa? St- win the Stanley Cup at the Super Bowl? I yeah. don't... Yeah. So, so tired from staying up, you just fucking get them all mixed up. So this episode is, and I'm going to present to you, Karen, the story of the Trojan horse. We're talking about Troy, the the Trojan War. Now, all I say correct so far. I say Trojan. I know what you think. You, <laughs> you big say, pervert. You say Trojan horse, and I think of like you know, I need to get my M- McAfee fucking. Antivar or something running like you know what I mean or no when I say Tro- how do you say that I don't know but I know when I say Trojan I know what you're thinking of getting oh, up and running oh. <laughs> a, wee, a wee baby root do we <laughs> oh no <laughs> do we know and maybe we could find out before the episode Dan what's the link between Trojan and Trojan condoms uh, uh, presumably you're anic- going in like a Trojan horse because <laughs> you take the condom off you realise uh, it's an extra finger. It's actually a load of Greeks. Um, <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just like, wee tiny Greek like, guys. Like tough as an old Trojan, like you know what I mean. Right. You you want your you want your knob to be like Prince Hector, like right. You know I mean? Who will who will talk about? Right, right. Now also, we know that Karen and I we have the varying degrees of historical references. I might I'm a wee bit like um, I'm a bit like Bob Dylan. I'm not great. It, it doesn't sound amazing, but the essence of it's real. Yeah, you know what I mean. So don't worry about facts and names and years. Whereas I'm like you're overproduced. I'm like I'm I'm like the new Metallica. Right. You know what I mean. You're going. I obviously don't look. You're at like me. I don't know the new Metallica. Right. Let me see. I'm. Do you know what? I'm Justin Timberlake. No, that's class. You're not Timberlake. I'm Timberlake. No, you're Lance Bass. <laughs> No, you're you're literally the guy with the goatee who's in NSYNC. Yeah, the guy, no one knows his name. Uh, Joey Fatone. <laughs> Fat one. If you've joined us for this episode of Mysteries, we are talking about Joey Fatone, but let's leave Joey <laughs> Fatone at home and talk uh, about Troy. So, Kieran, what do you know, just in a nutshell, about about Troy, about the, the city of Troy, but we'll get into it later, that it might not just be one city. 
Right. So talk to me about what you know about this. Well, I know I know a number of things, or I, 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 I've studied a number of things. So Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey, you know, so the, the Iliad is the story of the the Greek fleet going to Troy, the battle, uh, and then the Odyssey is about Odysseus and his journey back. So um, Homer, by the way, for anyone, because there will be a lot of people, like my kind, the two types of people listen to this podcast, your kind of people and my kind of people, and my kind of people will be like, why are you bringing Homer Simpson in this? Absolutely, just disappearing in the bush. Yes. Yeah. He was a, a writer. A poet, yeah. A poet, historian. Yeah. Um, and his account of this is like the account. Yeah. So but like, there's Virgil too. Yeah, but the, uh, Virgil would have probably used Homer to write his one. You know? Plagiarised? Yeah. He, he Do you think he didn't he even change the it. name at the he top? He sampled it. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> um, Virgil's Ed Sheeran. He's having to show them all these books. Look, these, all, these are all the same. <laughs> so the other thing that I know, right, so... But well, Troy, I, I don't want to steal anything that you want to present here, but... Please don't. Troy was an ancient civilization. Yeah. We're talking 3,000 years... On the map. Op- opposite Greece, the other, the other side of the Aegean. We're talking Turkey. Yeah, northern Turkey, yeah. Modern day northern Turkey. But we're talking, I don't know if it's 3,000 years ago from Western now... Western Turkey? Or from, Western from Turkey. Jesus being dead... No, yeah, three thousand years from now, so about a thousand BC. We think that's when this. Uh, this war was all happened. when this was all kicking off. Yeah, when this palaver happened, right. that's when we're roughly talking about. So, and um, by the way, do correct me if I'm wrong. I won't. So, no, but genuinely do, because then the listeners won't have the facts. The facts. I'm so, get that. we're talking Helen of Troy. That's yeah. That's that was the thing I was about to say. They say the most beautiful woman in Greece. Right, mm. they're saying she. They know what they're saying. Saying she's a real babe. That's if, what they're if, running about saying. If if Troy was a a Belfast council estate, you'd say she was a wee buck bag. Right. <laughs> That's what I think. Some people said that then. Yeah. But she is <clears throat> so beautiful. Now she's married to a Spartan king. Yeah. Called. I don't know either. Me- Menelaus. Correct. Played by Brandon Gleeson in the movie. Right, genuinely, that'll help me in this story picture right. people. Right, so she's married to Brendan Gleeson. Yeah. Now he's always off doing wars and all, and everyone's like, "Mate, she's class and all," and he's going, "I know, but I have a job to do." She's at home, and she is guarded by lots of soldiers guarding her chamber because I think Brendan Gleeson knows her chamber. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. We fucking flesh chamber. Yeah. <laughs> We meat cupboard, <laughs> <laughs> kebab pantry. So it's great. So um, so she's being guarded. Oh my now, God. Prince uh. Paris of <laughs> Troy. Troy. He he's going now. I don't know a lot about him. He strikes me in my head. He looks like Timothy Chalamet. He looks like Orlando Bloom, if you believe the movie. <laughs> right. He, so Orlando Bloom, who's Prince Paris. Right. He 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 likes her a lot, yeah. And one day he goes, "Do you know what? She's not she's not getting them from her husband." Right. Well, this isn't a correction. This is an addition, I suppose. There's a war sort of going on between Sparta and Troy, and it's all been a bit. And this sp- is rare. And important to say, Sparta has an agreement that if it goes to war with Troy, all of Greece will join Sparta. Yeah. Yeah, because which is annoying because you know that's going to happen at some point Menel- when you sign that. Yeah, because men allow us his brother. It's like a, here. It's I'm a, not planning to go to war. It's like a release but if clause. I do. It's a release clause. Do you right. know what I mean? Yes. Alexis McAllister away to Liverpool, thirty-five million. Yeah. United are going to pay eighty for Mason Mount. Anyway, <laughs> nothing to do with nothing the story to do with this, of Troy. Right? But <laughs> consider consider this. So so that that sort of things happening. That sort of the and and then this is around. So so men allow us his brother Agamemnon is a, a mean bastard and he, he's the one who's made that kind of deal with the, the rest of the Greek city-states yep. that they will join uh, a war against Troy because it benefits all of Greece to fucking uh, defeat Troy. Now, uh, so in, in the context of a peace treaty being signed, Paris and Hector, his elder brother, the heirs to the Trojan throne, are in Sparta for a bit of a fucking let's do this peace deal let's do this peace deal 
That's few true. pints at the same time. F- f- few ooz- oozles and a fucking a kebab. Bossman's right? holiday. Right, Bossman's holiday. Right. <laughs> That's what they were calling. Yeah. I said, "Listen, we're, we're here for work." All going on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're going. Listen, we're going here for work, but well, a few pints at the same time. They're having like they're having nice dinners <clears throat> and a few drinks with dinner. Yeah. I don't see the problem. In it. I work on holiday. I work on holiday. So, eventually, Prince Paris is like Helen with Tro- Helen of Troy. You know, me like lock eyes from across the room and right. Karen, don't do the noises. Right. right. So he eventually breaks into your chamber. <laughs> and he doesn't know how she's going to react. She might scream and all these guards will come in and kill him on the spot, thinking he's an intruder. But she turns around to him and she says, Oh, wow. Uh. Oh, wow. Uh. Historically, that's what Homer yeah. says she said. All right, Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Jump in. So then he says, listen. Jump in the Machuna, Peter. He says, I, <laughs> he says, I like you. And yeah. all right, he goes... Watch a video version for me touching Karen's hand. <laughs> he says, I like you. He goes, listen, why don't you and me run away together? I want to be with you. And she says, dead on, I'm in. So they flee. Now, do you think, tell the truth, right? Do you think that this is all based on just looking at each other and going, we get on and I like you? Or do you think they were... Already before this, I think they were pounding it. Like I think he sent this. I think he's the sort of guy like a teenage disco. Like he's sending his mates and all. To be fair, that's a great show because oh, Alan, he fancy he love he thinks you're class and all. He loves you. Cause, they're shouting it up through the cause, window. Because see, because see, this is a good shout actually. Because at a teenage disco, if you thought you'd get a sniff, you probably would allow your country to go to war over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I've I've listened to and read accounts about this, and histo- these historian guys are like. You know, the say she was really beautiful, but I don't think anyone's going to be beautiful enough for a 10-year war to happen. Oh, of course. Like, that could, of course, be the reason. What, what Probably if, what most if, wars what, came down. Yeah, I mean, what if Paris... Sorry to interrupt you, but what if Paris and Hector were sharing a room and Orlando, or, or Paris, sorry, couldn't have a proper holiday wank when he's away? Yeah. And so he's built it up for a few days. He sees how and he's like, war. Don't right. Care. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, Kieran, you have to you have to be really <laughs> careful lamp. because the lamp the lamp of Vis- Vesavius yeah, Vespasian Vespasian is flashing, and you know what that means. If you just joined us for an episode, the em- Emperor Vesavius channels himself into this antique lamp. And Am I being means, too rude? Is that why it's flashing? No, he just wants you to wrap up. All right, we need okay. to get more into the story. Sorry, right? We didn't know that much detail about the bedroom. We can go on to the story. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So they run away together. They get on ships and they go back to Troy. Her fella sees, Brendan Gleeson sees this and he goes, what the fuck? The fuck are you doing? And he probably like, he probably throws around his guards and all, right? That's what he's, he fucking grabs him by the head and all. And, uh, and he goes, listen, we're away to war here. We Texas are his brother. Away to war. She's left me. Message his brother. Yeah, and his brother. Like, I, I told you she was trouble, bro. And all. Keep, keep a head up. He sends a pigeon to say, keep a head up, bro. <laughs> he sends a pigeon. <laughs> but not, not with a note attached to it, the pigeon says it. That's so, that's so good. He sends a pigeon. <laughs> yeah, so, so they go, listen, we're going to get her back. It's time to go to war. Now, the thing about Troy is, you can take your ships over to Troy. Good luck getting in. Mm. The walls. But they get the ships ready. They say, we're going to war. But the way, there's no wind. Yep. So they can't take the ships across the Aegean Sea. Aegean Sea, was that yeah, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Whoa. So they can't get across the Aegean Sea. So they go to speak to the gods. Brendan Gleeson goes to speak to the gods. And they say, listen, because we sacrifice and we'll give you a bit of wind. And he goes, nah, I don't want to do that. And they go, listen, give us a bit. We need a big sacrifice. And he goes, who would even sacrifice? And they're like, your daughter would be all right. And he goes, fuck's sake and all. But he, he wants to get his missus back. So he ends up sacrificing his daughter on top of a hill, telling her it's going to be her wedding. Wendy day. Hectic. Yep. The wind picks up and away they go. Now, Prince Paris's da, the king, basically has the attitude of, he's done wrong, but less, I still, I'm still a daddy, so I'm still going to have his back. He's probably looking at Helen going. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Do like a molar, do you? Don't call him, I'm not your daddy and all, just think of me, I'm, I'm your mate, you know? Um, so he says, listen. <laughs> I'm your mate. 
He says, listen. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I'm not chopping my son out. He goes, if they want a war, bring it on. All of a sudden, the the Greeks are at the the walls, but they can't, they can't get in, they can't do anything. Mm. So what follows is... A siege. Well, it's, but then they can't get in. I know, yeah. There's a 10-year war. Apparently 10 years, yeah. 10 like that's a, how, how quickly would you give up? I'd be there three weeks. I mean, she's aged 10 years in that time. But like a fine wine. Ta- but, but, but. Can I just say, unlike ta- you, I think ladies look more beautiful as they get older. But that's just, that's just me. So go ahead. Un- unlike me. No, <laughs> yeah. I. You I, clearly I, made a team. No, no, I'm saying she's. You said a- women over 25 are stinking. <laughs> right. I'm saying, I'm saying she's aged in that time. But also, more importantly, she's been fucking taking Paris as wee Trojan as well. Taking his so, Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, creepy so, laugh. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the king's laugh. <laughs> I'm your mate. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, <laughs> so like, so she's been like that's ten years. I mean, it's sullied at that point, isn't it? Mm. Ten years. Like uh, this isn't the case of thinking someone's cheating on you. Do you think going, he? Fuck it, don't know. Maybe things will be all right. We'll work it out. She's been in getting dick behind them walls for ten years. Do you think Paris is trying to like convince? Like even at that point, you know. Mate, no done in her, ten years. And he's like, he's like, here, if you want to, don't feel like, I'm not keeping, if you want to head on. Paris is bored of her now. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, they, say, they say she was the face, that, the face that launched a thousand ships. That's what they say about her. No. I think it would be more accurate if they said, sea that, cats, if they said a thousand drips. But now, what I would say is, they were sea cats. I think, I think though, the people who are usually that good looking, Terrible personalities. Yeah. Because they've never had to develop one. Right. She's Because pr- people just do things. They they get social rewards based on people being attracted to them a lot of the time. Right. Occasionally, you know, you'll find a cracker like me who doesn't it does know both. Great, You know what I mean? Yeah. Develops that personality and you're... A, you actually become a triple threat at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, personality, face, girth. Um, you look like Mr. Tumble's dad. Dad humble. Yeah. Um, so I think I I think Paris after a year or two they've done everything in there. There's all, so much pressure that, on them to make it work. Too. All yeah, all that uh, disco sweat and disco fucking uh, what do you even call that? Like uh, disco blinkers that he's had. You know where he's been looking at her in Andy Town Leisure Center at the laser disco going on. Oh. Yeah, right, right. And then you get outside in the cold light of day outside Rafa. So it's probably go. not even worth this 10-year war. It's definitely not. So let me point out, um, in between this time, like they're fighting constantly, uh, Troy and like. Greece. And the person that's responsible for a lot of these deaths is Achilles. Achilles. Now he is Greatest warrior. a demigod. Yeah. Maybe, but he's 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 like... The greatest warrior in Greece. Mythologically, they say he was held by his heel and dipped, I think, in the river Styx. Is that yes, right? correct, it is. And that made him. That made him basically by his by his ma, yeah. who forgot because she was holding him by the heel. She forgot yeah. to dip his heel, and that's so he, that's he's, where you get the Achilles heel. That's his weak point. That's his weak point, and yeah. that comes back into the story, obviously. Yeah. So he's he's wrecking boys left, right, and center. Right, he's like no bother to this guy, and he fights in this big armor. Yep. And the thing about armor back then, and in, in that society, is if if a what, like top warrior died, right, Greece's next top warrior, uh, sp- presented by Tara Banks, when he died, his armor would be passed down to the next worthy guy. Yeah. Right, so uh, Achilles fights in this armor, and he is what are Troy people called? Trojans. Makes sense. He is he's wiping out all these Trojans, right? No one wants to be in the battlefield with him. And he's sent for, right, by Brendan Gleason and the boys who are like, get him in. He's like I don't wanna uh, we can't keep doing football analogies. He's a wee bit like uh, remember Kim and Aggie? Yep. He's coming he comes in to clean it up. Hi Greg is your house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? So he comes in, he's killing people. Do you ever uh, see the way he kills people in the movie? No, I haven't seen the movie, you see. Brad Pitt runs at people. He sprints at them. And then he goes, Hi-ya! He jumps up and does like a, a sword down in. That and angle. comes into you through here. Pierces your heart. Tasty. 
and people die and and then you know he's up against it when he goes hiya against Eric Bana, Hector, and Hector shit like blocks it. A well, we'll, times. we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Sorry. So, um, yeah, Achilles is killing everybody. Then Achilles, I can't, I can't remember who it is. His nephew. Someone from no, someone from Achilles' own. The Myrmidons, his group. Side. I'm not talking about the Myrmidons yet. Right. Okay. Relax. Someone on his side. Sorry. You're like a wee new dog, right? I'm gonna cut your balls off. So like this. Yeah. You're gonna feed me. So, <laughs> so he goes. Someone gets it on with a Achille- Someone steals one of Achilles' lovers from his own team, and Achilles goes, "Who you doing this? I'm doing all this on the battlefield, and people are disrespecting me back home." He goes, "Tell you what, I'm not fighting." He goes, "I'm not fighting," and they're all going, "Achilles, mate, no, come on," and he goes, "Nah, I'm done." And the, and then that gives the Trojans such an advantage. The tide starts to turn with him, the greatest warrior ever gone, demoralizing the troops. Yeah. Then Achilles has a wee mate. I don't know what he's called. It's Paul Pogba, isn't it? Isn't yeah. When Pogba yeah. just decides, yeah. not planning it. Yeah. Who, I don't know his wee mate. Say his wee mate's got Gareth. Patrick Patrickles. Yeah. Right, we, we Pat. We Pat goes, here, come on. No, he goes, no, he goes, I tell you what, <coughs> you go, I'll take your armour. Right? He goes, I'll, I'm going to do my best. So he gets Achilles' armour. But everyone thinks that's Achilles. So the so all the all the Greeks are like, yeah, he's back. Now, the Trojans get freaked out by this when they see this armour on the battlefield. Paris' older brother. Hector. Hector. He Not goes, to be confused with Hector's, which used to be a shop that sold brushes out of a, you know, they would sell deck scrubs out of a light, wheelie bin. Light. On the Falls Road, go ahead. Oh, what is it, Emperor Vitavian? Um, Right. Hector this. sees uh, a... Pat on the battlefield yeah, pretending to be yeah. Achilles and he's like right I'm a big deal because he's a great warrior he goes Hector's like the Achilles of the of the Trojans so here we go and everyone stops in the battlefield and watches this they have a bit of a fight Pat ends up like pinning Hector and everyone goes oh he's going to get him Hector just dodges it poof dead kills him and he's like yes I've killed Achilles takes his helmet off and there's Pat all dead oh. <laughs> there's Pat just big stupid face on him <laughs> So the raging dragon, he, he lifted it off and went, "Ah, gee." Yeah, you, you, you've. This is you're trying to make us your new catchphrase, and it's annoying me. It's old. It's old. It's from I the know. 90s. I ah, know, gee. but you're really pushing it again. You're like a guy who, in 2023, he's bought a load of like uh, slinkies, and he's being like, "Everyone does slinkies." They don't. I like the metal ones. I don't like them. We do you remember? Go ahead. So we're multicolored plastic ones. Go ahead. <laughs> so. This is what happens. So now Achilles is fucking fuming about this. This is the turning point of it all. HTP, historical turning point. They go <laughs> they go back to Achilles and they go, you're, they've killed your mate. And he goes, right, give me that armour. I'll go back now. Now. You know what he should have done? Not left in the first place. Yeah. His mate, he killed his mate. We Pat? Yeah, Pat's dead. So Achilles gets the armour back on and goes back. Oh, shit. It'd be like, who's like done a big return or something? You go, oh. Like, give me a modern pop culture riff. Uh, uh, um, of, a, of a comeback? Yeah. Cantona in 95. Oh. Eric wow. Cantona. I, guys, a lot of viewers will be, a lot of history people won't be in the football. What about when... Craig David. What, a, what, what about, about when Craig David came back about 2014? What about... All on you. Ooh, yeah. What What about um Britney post... uh. Britney bitch. The, yeah, when, whenever it's Britney she, bitch. Whenever she came back with that barang, you know, whenever that yeah. one was called. It's Achilles bitch. Yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. That's creepy, dude. Mm, yeah, all right. Can you feel me in? in? So, she, <laughs> I think we're both getting yeah. the light, right? So, he comes back. Achilles, man. And no, Jesus. Work. It's wild. Now, when he comes back, he ends up on the battlefield. Now, Paris' dad, the king of Troy, Priam. has got Priam's gone. Peter O'Toole, if you need that, you don't know who I that don't is either. No, he goes, Paris, you're in here fornicating all day. Your brother's out in the battlefield. Get you out there too. Yeah, yes. Yeah. He goes, you in hell on a Troy. He goes, get you out there. Paris, this fucking room stinks. Son. Yeah, crack a window, <laughs> crack a window, and pick up a sword. This is fucking turkey in the summertime, son. You liberty. <laughs> Put that fish bowl down. 
What are you doing running about with your fake Barcelona shirt on? It smells like somebody's <laughs> fucking Fran Mason here. What are you fucking? <laughs> 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 Uh, ironically it smells like a turkey he's just dead <laughs> get your pants on and get out there right so Paris is shit in battle yeah right Paris is us yeah right? yeah he just he don't want to be in the battlefield and they give him a they give him like a, a, a bow arrow, and arrow a bow and arrow and they go listen do what you can so archery sorry by the way at this time in, in Greek warfare it's not really it's not you're you're not considered particularly brave if you're an archer. Right. There you go. Right. It's seen as what, like we sissy guys? Well it's sort of like well sort of, yeah, but also <laughs> a wee bit like um It is, now I'm thinking of it. it well like I mean you're a few you're you're a couple hundred yards away firing up into the air most of the time, you know. What right, I mean? right. Uh also Orlando Bloom's uh second massive role as an archer. Go ahead. Orlando Bloom's second major if we weren't doing this you'd be on an Ulster bus telling someone that <laughs> and you wouldn't need to go to the place you're going you would just get on the bus <laughs> hello friend take a seat <laughs> so <laughs> plenty of room at the end here for a seat uh, you, would you like a you like a boiled leg? so um, so Paris sees Achilles on the battlefield <coughs> he sees him you know what he does fires a wee arrow He's aiming for Achilles midsection. Where does he hit him? The heel. The heel. Achilles heel. Slices through the heel. Is it, this is after though, isn't it? This is after pa- uh, Achilles has dealt with Hector, like. Will you tell us that bit? Right, so there's a, a bit where... Um, this is all outside the walls of Troy still. This yeah, is yeah, all yeah. On, yeah, on the beaches, yeah. like. And uh, Achilles, Achilles calls Hector out for killing Patrocles. And they have a dramatic one-on-one showdown. And uh, Hector is being to talk to his wife and all and tell her to fucking, you know, save the kids, save Troy. If Troy falls, get the fuck out. And goes and talks to his dad and all that. Very all dramatic. Achilles is just standing there being like, Hector! Right? And uh, it's basically like he's he's gone, he's gone to someone's house and gone... You beat up my calls and get out here now. Right? <laughs> yeah. And he's just standing there going, Dee, fucking, <laughs> right? And uh, comes out, Hector comes out and they get into it. And eventually, Achilles absolutely fucks him up, kills yeah. him, right? And then uh, sort of mutilates the body. Uh, yeah, he's dragging it about with him for days. Yeah, and I won't let them do a proper burial. Then he's convinced to do the right thing. Meanwhile, that lover of of Achilles that you were talking about is actually a priestess he captured in one of the early raids on Troy, and they captured one of Hector's cousins, who then he was planner for a few years. Um, and and there's a whole Stockholm syndrome thing there with them too. But anyway, um, so then yeah, eventually. Paris is the one who, but but this is I I'm nearly sure that that happens after the horse. No, that happens during the raid, does it not? No. The Kieran, raid. is your research just based on the film? No. Okay. I, I'm trying to remember. Does does Achilles Achilles not involved in the raid, or does he die before it? I think he dies before it. Does in he? fact, I'm nearly there's, certain of it. There's I a, haven't there's read a raid. And, and I'm gonna get killed to if I'm wrong. I'm gonna get killed. There's a in the raid comments. on the temple. Yeah. Which happens. And then, as far as I'm aware, the horse is the last. The horse is the No, mate, Achilles, Achilles dies because there's another wee fellow who comes in and comes up with the horse idea. Right, okay. Right? Well, and that, he, gets, he gets Achilles' I always thought armor. the horse... Is this correct? Is the horse the idea of Odysseus? Yes, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Sean Bean. It is the idea of Odysseus. Right. Because Achilles gets killed by right. Paris, uh, shoots him through the heel... As he falls, all the soldiers come, stab him multiple times. He dies. His armor is given, I mentioned earlier, they give the armor to someone of equal standing. There is no one. Eventually, Odysseus gets it. And he... By the way, this 10-year war, no one, they've still not got into Troy. One does They're not outside. simply enter Troy. That sounds like the grinder bio of a guy called Troy, but he does like a wink and emoji after it. Yeah, you, yeah, do, you, you do, do get in. You do, you do get in. One doll one simply. One in. <laughs> He's the Lord one of the Rings. One simply get in the Troy. That's great. Yeah. So, um, 
So Odysseus comes up with this idea. He goes, here's what we're going to do. We're not getting into the... If they're thinking, if we can breach these gates and get into Troy, we'll win. That is that is a whole thing, by the way. But we just can't warfare. get in. Yeah. So what he does is he goes, listen, let's make it look like we're surrendering. We need a Trojan horse. Now he said that and that it hadn't happened yet, so people were like, people didn't get it. And what do you mean? He goes, we just need some sort of Trojan horse. And then he went, what if we had a literal no, number? He comes up with this idea of this big wooden horse as a present, as a peace offering, um, and he they fill it, they hollow it out, it's massive, and they fill it with like the hand picked best Greek soldiers and assassins. They leave it overnight, uh, like at early evening they leave it at the gates of Troy and then they sail away but they just go to a nearby coast yeah they're like they sail out of they're sight like, that's us boys alright we're de- we're heading yeah, off here that's yeah. us the way home oh come with oh looking forward to a big slap up dinner when I get, ho- get home Th- then they're just oh, peel over to a nearby cove uh, Troy wakes up to find this the people of Troy they think this is amazing they open the gates they bring the horse in they have a big celebration uh, all the soldiers everybody in Troy gets blind drunk like they've won the war in the middle of the night these soldiers open a trap door they get out of the horse they light Troy on fire and open the gates as soon as the boys see a bit of fire get the ship around they get into Troy and just kill everybody basically, basically raise the place. just absolutely but, because do you know what would be difficult even if you're like a skilled Trojan soldier, you're blitzed. Yeah, yeah. Mere and all, mere they're all steaming, they're all fucked. Like you're just, like you yep. can't, you, your aim isn't working. You're just like, oh, fuck shit. You're bowing arrows the wrong way around. I'd be nar- I Can you imagine me being a drunk, tired Turkish soldier? Yes. Just being like, do you know what, lads? Stab away. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't be fucked. Yeah, just then, like, your pants are on, back to front, they're yeah. both on one leg, you know what I mean? I'd be like, let me, let me finish this subway. Yeah. And then stab me in the back eight times, because I don't want it. Yeah. Right? Do you know, so the thing with the 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 horse is interesting then because that sort of then becomes like a, like that's like a turn of phrase, you know, for like somebody giving you a gift to sort of distract you while they fuck you blind. Yes. But um, also uh, then in terms, or do you want to talk a wee bit about how, like what the discovery of where it was and all? Because I know a wee bit about that. What do you mean, Troy itself? Yeah. Yes, so we're going to get into right, it. Right, okay, okay. But, yeah, so... I wouldn't have to ask questions like this if you provided a document beforehand, but it's okay. You provide... The worst thing is, I don't provide a document. You provide a document with the expectation that I will read your document. Kieran, I won't even write my own document. So this is like a, a what the horse might have looked like. Can I also just add very quickly, getting in through the gate of, of a city state at this time was like... That is how you win. A lot of the time uh, in Greek warfare, what they would have done was in hoplite warfare, which is the type of soldiers they were with the big shields and the spears and and a small sword. They they would have Me pinner. They would have fought sort of on flat flat lands, right? Usually outside both cities, like somewhere in the middle. But obviously this was different. They were besieging this place. Now there's there's actually uh, a source that I I do have, but it's packed. Any asked the tactician. And this survives. And he used to manage us at Hollywood FC. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, a treatise on uh, a what? A treatise like a, a treatment on uh, siege warfare in ancient Greece. Sorry, a what? <laughs> treatise. The fuck's that? Like a like a like a pamphlet, like a long say pamphlet. pamphlet? I it's barely a, know what a pamphlet is. It's a long pamphlet, though. Oh, I can under, I can fathom a long pamphlet. <laughs> right. If I can fathom a pamphlet, I can fathom a long pamphlet. Well, it's, it's called whoa whoa. It's called In the doctor's sage, waiting room. It's called whoa. sagecraft, right? Right. And it's it's a, so it is both about how to defend while whilst under siege and how to attack under siege too while, while besieging. <laughs> Somewhere, Stop right? Stephen Siegel. And, uh, yeah, Dark Territory. That's what that was called. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> Fuck off. Anyway, anyway, the the reason why I bring it up, though, is there's a whole bit in it about... <laughs> oh, your deck is important. There's a whole bit in it about getting in through the gates and, like, 
uh, like how to how to do passwords and all and 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 make sure make sure that none <laughs> of the guys do numbers. This is it? literally though from ancient Greece. The, there was this guy was a general and he wrote this fucking pamphlet. Yeah. About about um, a pa- like passwords and stuff, but also like how like no no oh, fuck up. You know what I love. You know what I love. A pamphlet on passwords. Listen to this. Ooh. No, this is good. None of the guards. Shush. Like, none, of, none of the. Don't none, make it anything too obvious. None of the guards. You have to make sure that the guards of your gate are, like, Im- impeccable, unimpeachable people who, like, Not they, can't, they, can't even, they can't have a gambling debt. They can't be drinkers. All this. They have to be, like, hard soldiers because all those people can be gotten to and bribed. So they have to be unbribable, right? Right. Because the like opening the gate will fuck your city, like right. So that's the importance of the horse and getting in. But all they they see this, and this might be a thing about you know material things. All it took was like a big present. Yeah, greed, Kieran. Well, some of them, some of them thought it was a present, and some of them thought it was a a sacrifice to guard the Greeks on their way home, and they were keeping it as a trophy of their. Ah, okay. Some of them thought that apparently. Right. So what I want to do is talk about um, whether you think this happened. The yes. argument that people say it didn't happen was that they think that when Homer was writing about this, um, that he was using this. And I hate this when people do writings. It was a metaphor because they think it could have been an earthquake that wiped out Troy. Mm. Because Poseidon, as well as being the god of the sea, was the god of horses, right. which is a nice wee double up, isn't it? I don't, yeah. yeah. So I'll do, I'll do <laughs> the sun. What are you yeah. doing, Poseidon? Yeah. The sea and horses. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> 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 so, people, so Homer might have been talking about the fact that it was an earthquake because Poseidon was the god of the sea and he I've was the god of horses. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I imagine I'm getting excited about it. You're the sort of guy who would write in metaphors. Why would you not just write there was an earthquake? Because that will then help everybody I, well, understand. I'm, it. Well, see, I think when people start reading at that level, that they're, I, I think, I think this happened. I, I don't think legit. I don't think Achilles was dipped in the river Styx. I think those sorts of things are added in. You have to remember, like some of this stuff is about like sitting around a campfire and telling good stories, and the, Homer's writing what maybe four. 500 years after when did he write I think Homer was a wee while after let's say that I think like 400 years after was he writing in like the 5th century maybe 5th century BC or 6th century BC so maybe like 4 or 500 years after right 8th century 8th century BC so 700s BC so he's writing like 200-300 years after right right so so he probably wasn't even there this story will have been told orally and then uh-huh. Homer, <laughs> Homer, that, that, do you want to hear a story? Homer sits down. <laughs> would he get my big oral Trojan? So he he says, Homer, sorry, Homer's the one that sits down and writes it as an epic poem in Springfield to to have it to have it uh, recorded that there's an actual version of it written down. Yes, but like, but why the metaphor? Why not just say? Well, it? I don't think it is also, a metaphor. Okay, so you think this was a literal thing? I think I it mean, actually happened. I think it's class, and I like to think that. It happened. I think it did happen. I, I like. I really. I believe it did happen. There's a lot of gods in the Iliad that aren't in like the films and stuff. Like all, all Helen that, is meant to be the daughter of Zeus. All that type of stuff. I, I think is meant to be son of an. Is it a water nymph or something? But like I that? think I think all that type of stuff is the sort of bullshitty make this into a great story. You know. But you I, think I, this was. They shouldn't have done that because this bit's great enough. Well, yeah, well, he's he's a poet and a storyteller. I mean, if you read fucking Seamus Heaney, not everything he says is literal. Like, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. or But some of it definitely is. Do you know and what I mean? if it's hundreds of years after and he's added all this, how can you be sure any of it's true? Yeah. The oral tradition. The, the I, I believe that the... I mean, what I think happened, whether, you know, wh- whether, like, the... You know the all the all the ins and outs and details are there. I don't know. Do I believe there was a war between the Greeks and Troy? Yes. Do it, I believe the horse? Yes. It shows you as well that if it is true, it shows you that brain in this case beats brawn because Achilles is like the greatest warrior of yeah. all time, and he obviously does so much for the war effort. 
but it takes Odysseus to just have a wee idea. Well, this, that's that's Odysseus's thing is that he's a patient thinker. Yeah, you know. But it just shows you that they tried everything with might, and then yeah. just when we when we sleek it, get when we when we clever. Shh, yep, slip that in. Somebody there. going here, don't fuck on. Yeah. Don't don't bring all your laptops down to the shop if you want them fixed. So he's baked, and he goes, "I know it's going to sound mental. What about a big fucking?" <laughs> Big fucking horse. Give him a big old fucking <laughs> horse, right? We'll put a big cock on it. I think it was just one guy we'll in hide, the dick. We'll hide three guys in the cock. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you're last, if you were last to get to be there that day. <laughs> last right? in, you're in the horse. Jimmy, cold. you're in the cock. <laughs> Jimmy. The original cock. This is. This is. Come here. Jimmy. <laughs> That's why it's called the cockpit on the plane. So. Man, I don't know, but I do know that, uh, and we'll finish by talking about this. Whether it, I, I, I hope that it did happen because it is one of the greatest stories ever. But um, I do like the fact that even the idea of where was Troy is, is disputed so much. This like city of Troy, this lost city of Troy. There's this German guy who's a bit of a nut, Heinrich Schleiman. Exactly. I mean, give the guy this German guy. But he was a businessman who then he was like, "I want to be an archaeologist now." Who hasn't had that thought? Me. Who ha- who hasn't gone? I am a businessman, and you you're doing well, and you go. Do you know what? I wanna. I want adventure. Yeah. So he goes. Listen. <laughs> that was so like. Yeah. <laughs> he goes. I want to find Troy. Mm. I want to find this site. I want to prove. I want to find the fucking horse. I want to prove that this happened. This was so, at a time when archaeology and classics and stuff like that was becoming like, like late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Trendy. It was a fucking massive boom. Like, yeah. Speaking of massive booms, he's not like your Tony Robinson. Like, no, no. That's he's not digging up with little. No. What did this guy bring? Dynamite. Everything. He brought dynamite and he went. Listen, I have a load of dough here. Buy me a load of dynamite and let's blow up this site in Turkey where we think it might have been. And hey, he was right. It fucking worked here. It worked. Like. People people can look back now and go, you've destroyed shit in yeah. in, in your actual yeah. way of getting there. Yeah. But <laughs> but also, like, he did find it. You know, he destroyed a couple of thousand years of other history. Do you think, could his defense have been to make an omelette? You got to break a few eggs? I found it, didn't I? That's his fault. Fu- I mean, you're eating it. It's earning it. No complaints. Aye. So, cheese. So he also found... This is interesting. He found jewels that he thought belonged to Helen of Troy. Mantle. And then they went, do you know this? Then no. they go, nah. It's like, it'd be like reading the X Factor results. They go, or I'm a celebrity, you know, and they say about, uh, it's, you're safe, you're not safe. He goes, they go, they didn't belong to Helen of Troy. And he's like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then they went, they're much older than that. Oh, good. So they're yeah. even better, but they didn't belong yeah. to Helen of Troy. Yeah, it's like MasterChef. Uh, this isn't the best souffle in this competition. <laughs> It's the best souffle I've ever had. <laughs> X Factor book camp. They go. I've got really bad news. Um, if you, if you were planning to go home, you're gonna have to cancel your plans. I've got terrible news for you. You're yeah. a better singer than Michael Jackson. <laughs> I've got Price good news. Crazy. I've got good. I've I've got bad news. You're going home because your home's the stage. You're staying. <laughs> but the stage isn't always just this competition. There's more out there, so we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> say goodbye to your family, because you're going to be here for a few more weeks. Fuck the light. That's the first time I can say first I have been involved the light. in the light. So, um, yeah, he, he, so to finish talking about this, he finds, and his team, obviously, it's more his team, they find layers of cities built over each other multiple times. We're talking seven, eight, maybe nine times. Um, they find what is widely believed to be Troy. Also, they apparently think it was not just one city, multiple mm. sites. Um, but it had been built so many times and I think it's like layer four or something. Right, okay. They go, this is when we dated when this right, would have okay. been. Mantle. So he was kind of right and Troy is more real you than people You can go there. I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's fucking, you can, like I think they do tours of it and all that. Because they made then a city in tribute to the historical. I'm going for Matisse, a Tommy Tuck, Troy tour. I love that. Quadruple T. Yeah. yeah. I Uh, I don't think in this story there's a lot of evidence of of guys getting sucked off. No. No no HBJs, historical jobs. 
no, but historical good guys hanging around this one. Any historical good guys? I mean, I feel like like Achilles might have been a. Um, all these Achilles big and Hector. Like, Hector's a good guy. Hector was a good guy. I think Odysseus, a good guy. But deceitful. See but, the thing about the metaphors thing. I I, I fuck it. I hate that too. Yeah. I hate. Yeah, see yeah. when I'm reading now. It, obviously, he's like not a historian. He is a poet, Homer. But like, see when people start going, oh, maybe this is, maybe it's not that. Maybe this is all just like a bit. I'm like, will you? Fuck up, because you could say it about anything, couldn't you? You yeah. could literally say, you could re, you you could literally say it about He's anything. He's talking about Brexit. Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe a history of World War Two is actually a metaphor for what's like now, and you're like, yeah. oh, fuck up. Now let me ask you this: okay. looking at this map of Greece, of yeah. Turkey, of the uh, Aegean Sea, yeah, I see Paphos there, and uh, Ianapa. Do people still go clubbing to those places? I think they do. I think really. I, I, you never hear Ayanapa, anyone. I think Ayanapa's still. Like, oh, by the way, you heard about this in the early noughties, mid noughties. But do you still hear people of going to, going to Kos, going to Paphos, going to Ayanapa? Mykonos, you don't. I hear. Yeah, but that's things. totally different yeah. here, and that's a that's a luxury that's like a, place. But I'm talking about these clubbing places that were like below Ibiza. You know, you're talking Malia as well. What was? Where, why, another, where are people going? Another Greek one that I'm thinking of, Corfu. But again, that's not. A, I'm talking about clubbing places. Is Corfu not? I don't think so. I think that's more of a... Pathos? Only Kavos. Oh, Kavos. Kavos. Is it stinking, huh? So what I'm saying is, is there a quiet... Why are people not talking about this? What's happening in Ayanapa now? Story for another day. Yep. Um, you believe that this was a literal story? I, I believe there was a war between, I don't. between Greece and Troy. I believe that, but I don't believe... I don't... I think I believe the horse. Do you believe it was started over a woman? Yeah. I, I can't understand why people think that's not fathomable. Of course it I is. I think all that's fathomable. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, that they've found fucking Greek... Uh, now, there could be other reasons for this, but they have found, like, Greek uh, military fucking artifacts all over that fucking bit, all over the coast. So in you terms know? of specifically the horse, the Trojan horse, because mm. this is more of a Trojan horse than a Trojan war episode, I'm saying myth for the horse. You're saying story. I'm saying story. Good. Great episode. Join us next time when we cover something else. The Holy Grail. Holy Grail of episodes. It's on the Holy Grail. Sip, sip. Mm-hmm.